Now, people in Puerto Rico are hoping desperately that they will be spared this hurricane season. The island is not prepared to take another hit. Arise News' Duarte Geraldino reports. It's been less than a year since Hurricane Maria ravaged Puerto Rico, causing more than $100 billion in damage and leaving the island in the dark. Now, with the start of another hurricane season, islanders are bracing for inevitable storms. You feel anxious because even now we don't have electricity. Even today we are without electricity and water. Really, it's been chaos. I would say it's been devastating. Teresa Vega is a family historian and Puerto Rican activist. She's helped private efforts to assist Puerto Ricans still living on the island. Do I think Puerto Rico is ready for the new hurricane season that starts today? Of course not. And we can only expect more devastation. We can expect the death toll to rise. The storm left debris on roads and decimated the power grid. The human toll is believed to be far worse. The official death count rests at 64. Now researchers at Harvard University say the true number is closer to 4,600 people. Most of those deaths were caused by medical conditions, made worse by the longest blackout in U.S. history and the lack of power generators at key aid sites like hospitals. Has America forgotten about us? Of course they have. What do you expect when you have an administration that treats us and deems us the other? When you have a president who has minimized our real pain? In response to Hurricane Maria, the U.S. government spent nearly $4 billion rebuilding the grid, yet it's still not done. The electrical grid is, it's mostly restored, but it's fragile. And, and I don't have to tell you that. If you go around to any village, there's many, many houses with blue tarps. And so the good news is it's keeping the rain out, but it's going to be a long time before all those houses are rebuilt. And in the meantime, they're just vulnerable. The Federal Emergency Management Agency is stockpiling 5 million liters of water and 80,000 tarps and permanently installing 600 generators in hospitals and water pumping stations. That's more than six times the number on the island before Maria. Forecasters at the Colorado State University Tropical Meteorology Project say there's a 70% chance the 2018 season could see as many as four major Category 3, 4, or 5 hurricanes. For Arise America, Duarte Geraldino. New research indicates the death toll from last year's Hurricane Maria is much higher than the official number, and the island is not prepared to take another hit. Arise America anchor Sheila McVicker spoke with Liz Cruz and her daughter, 17-year-old Jada Lee's Morales Cruz. Their family is among them, having fled to New York after Maria left them struggling to survive. Also in the conversation is the associate counsel with Latino Justice, Natasha Lisa Ora Bannon. Liz, let me start with you and with Jada Lee's. When the hurricane hit, what happened to your home? Well, it, the water went through, through the home, so it was all a mess. It was very difficult. There was no power. There was no water. There was no food either. So it was a big problem. Were you living in San Juan or in a smaller community? No, um, my house was in Isabela, uh -huh. Isabela, Puerto Rico. And how long was it before you had any help? Well, I think the help like for food or something it could be like in after three weeks or one month chadley's what was that like it was like a disaster it was a disaster yeah it's like a like i said like zombie apocalypse some type of how did you i mean did you have water did you have food how did you get by well the food we had to do some long lines that was like three hours for just keep taking a pack of four water bottles and like four packs of m meals. So it was very difficult. Uh, did you have electricity? Were you able to generate electricity? No. So how long did you put up with this? Well, until I got here. And that was in December, so about three December months. December 7, yes. And your situation, let me, t actually, before we do that, let me turn to Natasha and say, you know, 
this is horrifying. What yeah. What's the situation like now in, in Puerto Rico? Yeah, it's very much like the stories that you're hearing here. I've listened, Yadalis. Uh, you know, this, what we've been told is really that things have been restored, that there's electricity throughout the island, that most of the basic services have been restored. But the moment you leave San Juan in the metropolitan area, you find that that's not the case. There's thousands and thousands of families that still have no electricity, that have no running water, that are still struggling for basic services like access to health care, access to dignified housing, that perhaps they have a tarp, but perhaps they don't. So every time it rains, their house becomes flooded. You know, six months later, and we're still talking about the most undignified conditions for people to live in. What happened to your house? You said the water came in? Yes, and so when the hurricane came, we got there, um, we had to hold the air condition and the uh, windows because they weren't open and closing. It was it was very hard uh, the wind, and so all the floor was like three inches of water, and so everything is was like you didn't have a roof, and then it was raining in the house, but we did have the roof. But anyways, it went through the water. And after three months, was your house dried out? Well, we had to like clean it up. Um, open the doors and and the windows and get the water out of there and so a lot of things we lost because it was all wet but th was there mold and did that cause problems it did cause problems because it had uh, fungus so in the meantime my kids were getting worse health situation like asthma and so it got their asthma got a little bit worse just because it was a lot of fungus and it wasn't too easy and so I didn't have power and the hospital, it, it wasn't a good place to go in the meantime. So Natasha, are you hearing lots of stories like that where people are living in conditions that are in fact not good for their health? Yes, absolutely, thousands. I mean, we know that over a thousand people have died since the hurricane, despite the official numbers put out by the government of Puerto Rico. Which I think the official number is 69, is that correct? The official number was has been about 69 for the last four months. Right. right? And yet we know through investigative journalism that it's somewhere over a thousand, and that people continue to struggle with access to basic health care services. I mean, conditions that existed before have only been exacerbated after the hurricane. These are fortunately really representative of so many stories that we've heard of people with, you know, either serious conditions that just intensified and gotten worse or, or developed over time, whether it was skin uh, rashes from exposure to contaminated water, digestive il illnesses. Uh, serious conditions that exacerbated because there was no health care system uh, that was adequately you know, equipped or able to attend to them. And a lot of that has also um, been, you know, the, it wasn't just the hurricane that created that, right? There was an economic crisis and yes. deep austerity measures that had been imposed that cut uh, health care services, that cut education, that cut basic government functions that really exacerbated uh, the the humanitarian crisis that everybody has been reacting to for the last six months. And in terms of what FEMA says that they have been able to do, do or the government of Puerto Rico, I mean, they are painting a very different picture of conditions on the island. Yeah, that's not necessarily representative of the realities of people that live there. I mean, if it was if it was that way, you wouldn't have 300,000 people that left in the last six months to migrate simply to be able to live, right? That's a massive migration for an island that only had three and a half million people to begin with, 300,000 people who were seeking dignified conditions, right? We know that FEMA has not been forthcoming, that they've actually been, quite honestly, the obstacle to relief throughout this process, right? Uh, centralizing aid, refusing to distribute it, 62% of claims that have been denied, refusing to recognize um, what home ownership looks like in Puerto Rico, refusing to grant uh, assistance so that people could stay in their homes, instead putting them on planes and paying for hotels and paying twice as much as what they could have given them to be able to repair their homes and stay in their island. I think it's important to say, to remind our viewers at this point, that of course Puerto Ricans are American citizens. Exactly. And that you you are American. So the, basically FEMA, you couldn't stay in, you, you felt you couldn't stay in, mm -hmm. in, in Puerto Rico, that you had to leave and you came here. FEMA helped you, you come here. Well, the FEMA help, it was the only one is the hotel. I don't have no other help from them. I don't have no, there's no other, there's no assistant that it could work with us. 
and we are a part, just like you said, we're citizens, so I don't really know where is the help. And what is your situation now? Well, right now, um, since I've been here like three, more than three months, like four, um, the house that I used to live in Puerto Rico is a program, so it's called in Spanish Vivienda. And they give you only three months for permission to like get out of the house and you could be here for a health situation or it doesn't matter what situation you have. And so I went to the deadline. So they told me I gotta like give them the keys back. And so now I don't have a home back in Puerto Rico. So you've lost your home in yes. Puerto Rico. Yes, just because I was looking for something for her, their health situation. And so FEMA, I got problems with the part that when they said they're gonna pay the hotel, just because they gave you like 30 days. And then you gotta, maybe you could be extended? Maybe not. So if you don't get extended, where do I have to go? And so your, your situation with your family now is you have a deadline? Yes, until April 20. So you can stay in the hotel? Until April 20. Until April 20th, and after that, what will you do? I don't know. This is a situation that a lot of people who have left Puerto Rico, those 300,000 that have left Puerto Rico, that's are exactly finding themselves right. in. Right, that's exactly right. Either FEMA refused to um, provide them for assist assistance to be able to repair their home, they've had to leave their home because it's not habitable, they may be facing foreclosure as well uh, if there's no moratorium that the banks are abiding by. And so what you have is this tremendous housing crisis and these policies that are really pushing forced migration and displacement and leaving homes abandoned. And then the evacuees that are coming here are not finding the services that they were expecting. Natasha Jadalis and Liz, thanks so much.